Hello. In today's video, we shall be learning about force system. And to start with our discussion, let us discuss the meaning of a force. What is a force? A force is the action exerted by one body upon the other. Its external effect is manifested by a change in or tendency to change the state of motion of the body upon which it acts. Sa mga tweet, ang force ay manasabi natin na siyang aksyon ng isang object or isang body kapag ang body na ito ay mayroong interaction with another body. And that ang epekto nito ay makikilala sa pamamagitan ng pagbabago o ng tendency magbago ng state of motion of the body upon which it acts. How do we determine the effect of the force? In order for us to fully understand the effect of a force upon the body, we should understand the different characteristics of a force. And these are, first, the magnitude. The force must have magnitude. Second, we should have or we should know the position of its line of action. And third, we should know the direction in which the force acts along its line of action. Para lalo nating maunawaan kung ano ang magiging epekto ng force sa isang object, kinakailangan ma-describe natin ang force sa pamamagitan ng kanyang tatlong karakteristik. Una, dapat meron siyang magnitude. Pangalawa, dapat meron siyang position of, of its line of action. At pangatlo, dapat alam natin kung ano ang direction ng force kay kung saan nag aakito sa isang object. So let us now discuss the external and internal effects of force on the given body. When we say external effect of force on the given body, these are those that do not change with the point of application of the force along its line of action. These are independent of the point of application of the force along its line of action. Halimbawa, the state of motion of the body is an external effect. The reaction of the other body with which the rigid body is interacting with is also an external effect. To illustrate the external effect of force on rigid body, let us have this illustration. Imagine that we have here a body that is subject to, the, to a force whose line of action is defined by points A, B, C, and D. And let us imagine that here we have a force F which is applied at point C. If F is large enough that will cause the object to move, then what will happen is that Okay, when force is applied at C, then the body will move in this direction. Take a look at that point that the force is applied at C. Now, what will happen if force F is applied at B? If B lies along the line of action of the force P, and if the same magnitude of F is applied, then the body will also move in the same direction as when the force is applied at B. Now, how about if it is applied at another position, say for example at point D? As long as F is not changed and D lies along the line of action of F, then it will be producing the same effect. And that is what we mean by the external effect of force. That means the object the effect will not change even if the position of the force is changed. 
Now let us have an, another illustration of the external effect. And this is on a the reaction. Imagine here that we have here a truss and this truss is subjected to force 1 which is applied at E and directed along ED. We have another force F2 which is also applied at D and directed along the member EB. With these two forces applied at the structure, it will now cause reactions 1, 2, and 3 as indicated in the figure. So there will be the reactions 1, 2, and 3. Now the question is, what will happen to this reaction if force 1 and force 2 is moved at different position but along the same line of action? Say for example, F1 is now applied at point D and F2 is now applied at point B. When the two forces are changed in position, but the chains are that they lie on the same line of actions of the original direction of the forces, then the two forces will produce okay, the same magnitude of the reactions R1 R2 and R3. In this illustration, it will show that these two reactions, R1, originally when the force are applied at E, shall be the same as the reaction when the force 1 is applied at E and the force 2 is applied at B. Similarly, these two reactions, R2, will be the same when the original forces, F1 and F2, are applied at E, here, and now, when the two forces are changed in position, F1 is applied at D and F2 is applied at B. Similarly, these reactions of 3 will be the same. And that's how we explain the external effects of forces. Now, what about internal effect of forces? Internal effect of forces on bodies is to produce stress and deformation. The stress or deformation caused by the force on the body is associated with the point of application. Thus, the effects are different when forces are applied at different position along its line of action. So in this example, okay, you will uh, realize, you will understand that the internal effect is dependent on the position of the application of the load. Unlike in the external effect where the effect will not change as long as the forces are applied along its line of action, then the effect will not change. But in this example that I will be presenting to you, okay, you, will, you will understand the difference between the external effect and the internal effect of the force. So let us have this illustration. Imagine that we have here a bar that is placed on a wall and the bar and there is there lies a line of action of force. Suppose that this line of action is defined by points A, B, C, and D and that a force F is applied at A. What will happen to the external and internal effect? When we talk of external effect, the reaction, as the reaction, okay, the magnitude of the reaction will be okay, the same even if the force is applied at B. There will also be the same reaction. However, the one that you are seeing, shaded blue, the segment AB of the member, Will the segment that will be subjected to an internal stress, meaning this member AB will the only member, will the only part of that member that will be subjected to an internal force caused by an applied force at B. Now suppose that the force is applied at C. What will happen to the reaction? The reaction shall be the same 
there will be the same reaction as when the force is applied at B. However, the internal reaction shall only be okay, to the segment between A and the new position of the applied load P. There will be a longer part of that member that is subjected to an internal effect. Now, what will happen if the force is applied at the end? Okay, when we talk of external effect, there will still be the same reaction. The magnitude of the reaction shall be the same. However, okay, all the entire member will now be subjected to an internal effect. And so here you would understand okay, that the, ex the internal effect okay, changes as the position of okay, the applied load. Applied load. When the load is applied at different point, there will be different members of the material that will be subjected to an internal stress, internal effect. Now let's continue to discuss the principle of transmissibility. The principle of transmissibility states that the external effect of the force on liquid body is the same for all points of application along its line of action. It is independent of the point of application. This principle of transmissibility is actually the explanation of the effect, the external effect of the force upon the body which I have presented and shown to you using the illustration a while ago. What about the action of mechanics? So, in solving problems in mechanics, it is very, very important that we understand the different action of mechanics. But, before we discuss the different action, let us discuss first what do we mean by the action. The meaning of the action is that these are statements that cannot be proved mathematically but can be demonstrated to be true. These are statements that, that is hardly okay, proven but can be demonstrated easily and can be accepted to be true. In our entire discussion of mechanics, we shall be studying and applying the four different actions of mechanics and I'd like to discuss this one by one. The first action, action number one, it is about the Parallelogram Law, which states that the resultant of two forces is the diagonal formed on the vectors of these forces. Meaning, if we wanted to determine the resultant of two forces, we can find the resultant if we shall be using the application of the parallelogram law. We shall be having lectures on that in a little while. The second action. Two forces are in equilibrium. Only when equal in magnitude, opposite in direction, and collinear in action. What do we mean by this action of mechanics number two? It says here that when we have two forces that are equal in magnitude, that are oppositely directed, and are collinear in action, then the system of forces are in equilibrium. Action of mechanics number three. A set of forces in equilibrium may be added to any system of forces without changing the effect of the original system. Since an equilibrium can be considered to be a system of forces whose effect is zero, then that equilibrium, then that forces in equilibrium can be added to any other force system without changing the effect of the original force system. Action of mechanics number four. 
action and reaction forces are equal but oppositely directed. This explains the concept that was introduced by Newton. In his law of interaction, he says that for every action, there is always an equal and oppositely directed reaction. And that is what we shall be using in our solution to a problem in the future. Let us discuss the difference between a scalar and vector quantity. What do we mean by scalar quantity? Scalar quantity are quantities which possess magnitude only and can be combined arithmetically. Whereas a vector quantity are those quantities having both magnitude and direction which combine geometrically according to parallelogram law. So in solving for uh, in solving problems in study, it is very, very useful that we should understand and we should be able to use the concept of a free body diagram. And so let us discuss what a free body diagram is. What do we mean by a free body diagram? It says here that a free body diagram is a sketch of the isolated body which shows only the force acting upon it by the removed elements is defined as the free body diagram. So, what do we mean with that? In most instances, if we wanted to solve problems in statics, we need to have the drawing of the free body diagram. And therefore, we should be able to draw it as what? As an isolated view of the body that shows only upon it the action of all other bodies that are removed from it. That is what we mean by the free body diagram. 